Welcome to part three of my four part series. Um, this one on why men want male only spaces. Mainstream platforms are increasingly shadow banning content like mine due to the often difficult subject matter that gets brought up in them. So fewer people see it. So for those that do, please can you share it to your public playlist and spread the word. Thank you. Nobody will have failed to notice the Ferrari slash controversy over trans rights versus women's rights to female only spaces. I do not want to go down into the trans right rabbit hole because, well, partly it's not what this series is about, but also I do not wish to be asked to choose sides. I know several trans people and have known others. One I have known as a child and she has no interest in harming women, only being who she wants to be. At the same time, I can understand why some women feel threatened by the blurring of the line. What is less often discussed is the fact that cis men might also want to have their spaces too. Men, in fact, once lived lives away from women in many institutions. Much of this was due to those institutions being closed to women anyway, but what is true is that men had so many places they could go to bond. For upper classes there were the gentlemen's clubs. For the working classes there came the working men's clubs. It is important not to get romantic about the latter. For men unable to hold their drink, the WMC contributed to the scourge of DV rife in those times. But the, for the majority, the clubs provided a space at the end of a long, hard day at work to unwind, socialise and enjoy the company of each other as friends, not just workmates. Fast forward to now and the change to our male social lives could not be more stark. Women have so many gender spaces of their own now, from the WI to the Girl Guides, while men and boys have slowly had hours taken from us. Whenever we complain about this, the response is often the same. Women are at danger for male predators. We need our safe spaces. Men do not. When men are in male-only groups, they target us. There is no design denying one tragic fact here. Women are disproportionately the victims of DV, abuse, murder, and sexual violence than vice versa. What is never mentioned by women's rights groups is the one victim demographic. Higher than the female is male, ironically, at the hands of other men. The generally held belief is that what dangers are out there men can rest assured be safe around women. Certainly it is highly unlikely I will ever <clears throat> actually face threat from <clears throat> a woman I pass in a dark alley at night. But are men really as safe from female violence as we confidently assume? Because intergendered violence is disproportionately a male phenomenon, while acts by women per year are less and those reported as sexual abuse Acts per year can be counted on the fingers of one hand. The latter tend to make the news because, for reasons I don't entirely understand, the ones by females seem more lurid than the male majority. There was the case of the gang rape in the UK of a man by a group of young female clubbers who plied him with drink till he passed out, then essayed him using knives and other sharp objects causing horrific injuries to his anal region. They even filmed themselves laughing as they committed these vile acts. Or the bizarre case of the young man with cholerophobia, who was essayed by his own girlfriend, who having painted herself in clown face to, bright, to frighten him, then went on to attempt to murder him. He thankfully survived. There are several other cases, but perhaps the most horrific is the case from my home county of Norfolk, UK, where a woman went on a killing spree of men for no reason other than she wanted her fun.
she lived a double life as an otherwise loving mother. For sure these are minority cases, freakish though they are. What is concerning is not the cases themselves, but how they are treated by authority and the media. The clown face case focused on the murder attempt itself, but not the sexual assault that preceded it. When a female soldier essayed a male colleague at her barracks, she was let off and continues to serve simply because of her gender. This is an issue that needs talking about. Taking into account all this, plus the rising cases of domestic abuse against men, coming not so far behind male perpetrators now, not to mention the most recent case of a female teacher who preyed on a male pupil, bribing him with a Gucci belt if he would sleep with her, it is clear that men and boys have as much right to our safe spaces away from women, where we can bond, discuss our problems, vent our feelings, and simply be who we are, without being shouted down, or otherwise mocked, intimidated, or demeaned. Thank you. Like and share or comment if you enjoyed what you saw.